we keep faith, which you say is new to us, separate from politics? You have, you have in the past, for example, I remember when Anna Hazare was launching his anti-corruption movement, you did come and, and applaud it, but you said that the Lokpal was not some magic wand. I remember you saying that. Do you believe that we are seeing a dangerous cocktail of faith and politics getting more and more mixed up? See, uh, it is happening. I'm not saying no, but it's much less than ever before. Really? Yes. It seems to be much more than ever. No, before. that's because of you. <laughs> that's because, that's because if… if ten people get beheaded in some remote part of Iraq, you make sure the blood spills into my sitting room because of that. Otherwise, you are sitting here now. Today, let's say thousand years ago we were sitting here, thousand people got killed in Iraq. We will sit here peacefully thinking world is going really <laughs> great, springtime, everything is nice. Mm. So, this is because the dissemination of information, mm. if ten people get killed somewhere, it's a huge thing because it comes into our sitting rooms, bedrooms, dining room, everywhere there's a television. So it pours into our homes, so it is happening. So this is good because even a small thing looks magnified now in people's experience. But this has been happening always, it's happening at its lowest level now. Here and there it spurts up, which need to be controlled for sure. But what I see is, for the first time, for the very first time in the history of humanity, even if you… And the numbers are not qualified because the population has increased, even in terms of percentages of people, how many people can think for themselves today is huge compared to what it was a hundred years ago, five hundred years ago, a thousand years ago or ten thousand years ago. All these centuries, there would be one man in the village who thinks for you, who reads for you, who writes for you. You just have to do what you have to do, simple things. Today everybody is able to think for himself or herself. Now, human intellect is blossoming, I do not say it is blossoming in the right direction, with the right sense, no. Insanely it is blossoming, it doesn't matter, the insanity will happen for some time, people will come to their senses, when something is new they'll go crazy, mm. after some time they'll come to senses. Once human intellect blossoms sufficiently on the planet, then this looking upward for well-being will not make sense, believe me. Right now, from looking upward, slowly the world is tilting. For in pursuit of human well-being, people were looking heavenward. Still many are, that's different. But a whole lot of people have started looking outward. So if you look heavenward, hallucinations will happen. Wars will happen because my heaven and your heaven different, you know. Yeah. None of the heavens have anything for women, you better know that <laughs> I… I'm… I'm definitely going to hell. Anyway… Uh, so you believe in heaven and hell? I was being facetious. I was being facetious. <laughs> Let me finish this. I was being facetious. I don't know if there is That's somebody fine. up there. That is fine. Is it a force? No, I'm is saying it an energy? Is that… This… this thing you? about looking heavenward, is slowly going away and in pursuit of well-being, people are looking outward. This is ripping the planet apart. Human pursuit of well-being is just destroying the planet. Hmm. Now, the fundamentals of what we are transmitting, the fundamentals of this culture, which is essentially rooted in the yogic culture, what you call as Indian culture or Hindu culture, is essentially a pure yogic science in the form of culture, it finds many colors and distortions, hmm. which is what you are seeing as a Hindu culture or Indian culture, whatever you want to call it. But they're not interchangeable terms. Why? Because we are a multi-religious <laughs> country with many you, different I want cultures. You to <laughs> I want you to understand the word Hindu does not signify a religion. You ask them, do they worship one god if they're Hindus? In the same family, they're worshiping twenty-five gods. They don't… they don't know which is the god, so they're making sure worship everything <laughs> just in case something will hit, okay <laughs> Now, the word Hindu means the land between Himalayas and Indusagara. This land, this subcontinent is Hindu. All people who are born here are considered Hindu because it's a geographical identity. I know there's a whole political issue, if I speak like this, they say, oh, he's Hindu. 
No, I mean, people will tell you you're echoing the RSS chief. I don't know what he said, I'm not… He uh, said all Indians are Hindus and there was a huge okay, political I'm outcry not, over that. Okay, all Indians live between Himalayas and Indian Ocean. That's okay. Those who want to jump into the That's ocean… Okay. <laughs> If you live… Bef see, this is a dialectical culture, it expresses things in a certain way. Between Himalayas and Indian Ocean, if you live, you are a Hindu. If you jump into the ocean and cross, you are a Lanka <laughs> So, th I don't know what is the struggle about this. This is because there is such a narrow understanding of this. This is the debate we have to change in the country. Because somebody has absolute belief systems, we are trying to compare that to a culture where there is no such thing as belief. We have not ever been believers, we've always been seekers. This is a land where the highest value has never been God, always liberation, mukti. Freedom is the highest goal, God has never been the highest goal. So, you… you put this in the same box as something which just believes this is it or you're dead. Unfortunate, that's not the way to look at it. This is what we have to bring back. If we really value human freedom, you must bring back this seeking for liberation. I want to be free, not just from others, but from myself and my God and my heaven and everything. Because God has never been the goal in this culture. God is just another tool. When I use the word tool for a God, people get very hurt. They say, Sadhguru, don't say that. It hurts us. So that's okay. You come to the ashram, I'll give you some plumbing job, all right? <laughs> That'll so, hurt more. <laughs> no, no, no. No spanner, no winch, nothing. Use your fingers, nails, teeth, whatever. Mm. Three days later, finger nails will be gone, half the teeth will be gone. Then I will give you a spanner. Will you worship the spanner or no? We are who we are. As as human beings, we are who we are only because of our ability to use a tool. Mm. Otherwise, you are not even good as a dog. You can't even fight a dog, isn't it? So you're against organized religion? Quite clearly, if God is just no, a tool I, see, and faith no, no, is not, not the same I'm as not spirituality… I'm not saying I'm against this or that. All I'm saying is, I want human beings to come to this much. If you know something, you know it. If you don't know something, you don't know it. Everything that you do not know, you believe. This is a dangerous thing. Now, the fight on the planet is not between good and evil, this and that, no. One man's belief versus another man's belief. I'm saying, why the hell do you believe anything? Because you're essentially not straight enough to admit, I really don't know. I don't know people can't fight. I don't know you don't know, can we fight? I know is a fight. I do not know is never a fight, I do not know is a way of seeking. If we do not establish this seeking in every human being, that every human being is longing to know, whether outside or inside, whatever, you are… because this is the nature of human intelligence, it can't sit quiet. It can only sit quiet if you freeze it with belief system. If you seal it with belief system, it can sit quiet. Otherwise, the very nature of this intelligence is it wants to know.